be afraid. Children should be seen and not heard. Alan, speak up. I don't have all day. Think. No. Sit still. Stop thinking so much. Mommy and Daddy have to go away. Fear don't check the strangers. It's his See, you've seen six other therapists before. Anyone can live in such a mess. I wish you were as talented at cleaning up as you are at drawing. Mm. What would you like for breakfast? Uh, 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 eggs. You had eggs yesterday. I'll make you some French toast. I don't want. Seriously. I don't know. I'll just wing it. Well, you do still have a whole week to prepare before the ceremony. Come on. You can accept the university's Lifetime Achievement Award, and you're going to wing it, sure. Probably had your speech rehearsed for a month, right? I plead the fifth. And are all retired anthropologists as evasive as you are? I like this one. Let's see. Very nice. What are you going to call it? Cloud ball. <clears throat> Perfect. Oh, Alan, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I didn't have time to shop yesterday. You're going to have to buy your lunch at school today. Is that all right? Sure. It just keeps getting worse. Every day. over the weekend was to read Catcher in the Rye. I assume you've all read it entirely and are looking forward to discussing it. Tell you what, today, why don't we start in the back row? We don't want you guys feeling neglected back there. First of all, what is the underlying theme of this book? Philip? Well, I think the theme to this novel is adolescence and the odyssey into adulthood. Good, that's very good. Why do you think Holden Caulfield is the catcher in the rye? Peter? Um, well, at, at first I thought, well, when he said his answer, it just totally changed that. Gail? Yeah. Um, Holden is a catcher in the rye because he sort of catches everything that he experiences, and then he tries to hold on to it in his mind. Good. Now we're on the right track. Ellen? How does holding on to everything he experiences, how does that affect him? enough. By holding on to it, everything he thinks and 
fields. He overloads himself with memories and emotions. Very good. Peter, I'll see you after class. What would you like? A uh, cheeseburger and some corn peas. What would you like? Hey, just a hamburger and some corn. Hamburger. What would you like? Uh, just a hamburger. All right, come on. Thanks. Hamburger. What would you like? I said, what would you like to eat? Speak up, I haven't got all day. Cheeseburger. Next. I sense you don't want to be here. Am I right? What are you afraid of? Nothing. Alan, running away from your fears will only make them stronger and more terrifying. If you came here looking for an instant cure, you're in the wrong place. I have no magic pill. I could slice off part of your tongue like the doctors used to do in the 18th century. Or I could teach you to write with your opposite hand according to the theory of neuromuscular derangement. Now, the university's program has been very successful, but you have to work hard at it. Alan? Alan? Alan, did you hear me? Huh? I said, do you want more corn? No. Corn is good for you. In fact, I heard just today on TV that a certain amount of roughage is necessary for proper elimination. Turkey for lunch tomorrow? Sure. What's wrong with the food at school? <coughs> what say we finish our game of chess? Your move, Van Gogh. Go talk to Mark and I'll think a summer job would be good for him. Dr. Keyes said we shouldn't pressure him. I'm tired of all these doctors and their theories. He's 17 years old. We have to be patient with him. You know what we're doing? We're pampering him. No, we're not. What do you call it, then? Just trying to make his life a little easier. That's exactly what I'm talking about, Evelyn. You make his lunch for him so he doesn't have to ask for food at the school cafeteria. You answer the phone for him so he doesn't have to talk to anyone on the phone. God help the little cripple. He's not a cripple. Ah! That's ah! my point. Ah! What's he going to do when you're not around to, to hold his hand? Alan, did you know that Moses stuttered? Also Aristotle, Darwin, Winston Churchill? Do you know about Demosthenes? Nope. He was the most famous orator of ancient Greece. He was also a stutterer, and he cured himself by putting a pebble in his mouth. This is from my collection. you to have it. You see, he practiced talking with a stone in his mouth until eventually he could speak fluently without it. But I tell you, I know it wasn't the stone that actually cured him.
sick. I want you to wiggle your toes for me. It's fine. I'll be back after my rest. Thanks, Doc. Hi, Dad. The university sent you some flowers. Everything is fine. The Chancellor has agreed to let me accept the award for you. Dr. Parrish said you're going to have to take it easy for a while. Uh, you're in no condition to go. I can do it for you. Uh, 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 uh. You want Alan to do it? My name is Alan Woodward. I'm accepting this award for my grandfather. That was easy. To accept this award if you don't want to. It's up to you. You think about it. Dad? Yeah. When? She said that at the airport after we left, you kept crying. And, uh, she took you up on the observation deck to uh, watch some planes, but uh, that just made you cry harder. And you cried for hours. Later that same day, she uh, took you off the bottle. And when we came back, you were stuttering.
Alan, after your father told you how and when you started, did you stop stuttering? Mm, no. So that's just it. Some stutterers do begin because of a trauma, but a lot of them don't. Knowing how you started is not going to give you the answer to stopping. You're not give, giving me any answers. You're right. I... And we're wasting time. No, it's only natural to be afraid. But you can't sit inside your head and hide from life. <laughs> no, you don't know how it feels. You're right. I don't. Tell me. I told you, I have no magic pills. That's <laughs> 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 <So> funny. <laughs> It's not a a a Alan, it's a a a Alan. <laughs> hey, Pete, let's go. You don't want to be late to the team meeting again. Mom wanted to lock Hermes in his cage, but he gave her those sad eyes, and uh, she couldn't go through with it. You owe me a game. I, I can't stay too long. I have to uh, accept an uh, award for someone today. This time. I'm white. I would like to thank you on behalf of my grandfather. Tell me what you think. <clears throat> I would like to thank you. Uh, on behalf of my grandfather. Thank you.
is someone there? Is this Gail? Ellen? Yeah. Hi. I, I, I just called to a a ask if you'd like to see a show on Saturday night. Oh, no, I can't. Not really. I already have plans. But, I mean, I'd really love to go out with you and then... I, I, I can't talk right now. I gotta go. Hello? Congratulations on behalf of the Whittier College Board of Trustees to the members of the class of 1984. We wish you happiness and success as you enter a new phase of your lives. I have the privilege to present this year's Lifetime Achievement Award Professor Edward Talon, great scholar, explorer, and educator, a pioneer in the research of ancient shamanism and its present-day manifestation, a teacher in the highest sense of the word. Edward Talisman once wrote, a true teacher can never hide from the things he does not understand. He must never be afraid of any mystery or any challenge, for even though is only an illusion. The act of running away will make those fears real. This, this university, university is proud to present the Lifetime Achievement Award to Professor Edward Talisman, a true teacher. Professor Talisman is unable to be with us today. However, he has asked a member of his family to accept the award on his behalf. Edward Talisman is my grandfather and my teacher. He asked me to accept this award on his behalf and to thank you for this great honor. Thank you.